Welcome to the sports show. Mike Max, Patrick Rossi, Lavelle E. Neal, and Sid Hartman. Sid's a little owly tonight. I'm just going to tell you ahead of time. I haven't given you that warning before. You start with an official statement on the Minnesota Vikings. Official statement. Uh, today, the offensive line played pretty well. Uh, they got off to a very good start. Uh, Ponder played well. Uh, Rudolph, finally, got, they got him in the game. I think the coaches made a lot of changes that helped the whole situation today. I mean, I think the coaches can take some blame for what happened in the previous games. I think today they went down field a lot more, and it, it paid off. Well, it, defensively, I talked to the guys. They said no changes. Just we played harder because we hadn't been playing as hard. They tell you everything. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Well, you think they tell you they didn't have to, Defensively, they didn't have to change much. They just had to tackle and stop the run, That's which they did. After they, they gave up 200 the yards to make a try, third down, they were good. Gave yeah, up 200 yards to make a try, and oh, he, he's yeah. The blueprint for playing against the Lions is you don't have to worry about the running game, so you set your safeties back uh, deep they and shut well down. Just, no, they did okay. Michael Shore, who I saw at Illinois, he was a, he's an okay runner, you know, but. Uh, you know, you know, make a try and ran for uh, uh, caught 200 yards worth of passes against that uh, against the Vikings. I think that's you know something that they gotta watch out for uh, down the road here because um, without Chris Cook around, they're still vulnerable. I think uh, passing wise, Detroit's whole big deal now was putting that extra offensive lineman 71. on and trying to run the yeah. ball and uh, that didn't work. But they, uh, you know, they're just still the Lions. It's nice to have the Lions, isn't it? Because it? is. you watch them for a while and you say, "Doggone it, they're still the you Detroit." Know, never Lions. forget Mike Tyson. Never forget Mike Tyson's lifetime record against the Detroit Lions. Eight and zero. Oh. Isn't that something? <laughs> How about that? Big thing is they did it without Percy Harvin. And he's there, uh, along with uh, Peterson, by far his best football player. But they're playing with a right guard who can't. They don't have a right guard. The second team right guard is not any good. The uh, number one draft choice. Khalil, Matt Khalil. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good. Pretty but, good. But he's having his problems. Very good. So as a result, today he gets sacked pretty good twice. He's got himself beat up. He's been beat up for three weeks, but he won't say a word about Who's it. Who's that? Alibi about it. He's got the heck beat out of himself by being sacked as many times as he's been sacked the last three, four weeks. I think he tried to throw to people uh, without meeting, needing them 12 yards open. That had a lot to do yeah. with it. He took a, he threw to guys in tighter windows rather than just absolutely hold on to the ball unless the guy was wide open. I think he was more aggressive mentally. It helps Talking it to help. some of the coaches, they said they just kind of worked on clearing his mind all week. Don't, don't worry about being perfect, just throw. Well, this is a good slump buster for Ponder. It, it, you know, the Detroit secondary is terrible. There, there are yards and points available through that secondary, and Ponder proved it again, proved it again today with some, a lot of other teams done. So um, it was a good step forward for him, but now he's got he's to move forward from this because the schedule gets a lot tougher uh, against, against um That's not true about their true. secondary. You're absolutely wrong, Sid. Detroit secondary is the worst in the league. It's, it's awful. awful. It's god-awful. Not that bad. You had a different, <laughs> <laughs> different assessment? I looked at the stats. They're not that bad. Well, they're all hurt, Sid. The guys, guys are hurt. They're, they're like hurt. They're all, plunking people from... From the scrap heap in order to fill out a roster, man. So do you think this team can make the playoffs, the Vikings? No, I don't think they'll make the playoffs. Just because of schedule? The schedule is going to kill them. I mean, uh, uh, I don't think they can uh, beat the Bears. They've never beat the Bears in Chicago when they were good. So why are they going to beat them now? They don't beat Green Bay in Green Bay when they're good. So why are they going to beat them now? And uh, Houston's one of the best teams in the league. you got to play down there. St. Louis proved how good they are today by tying the 49ers. They're playing six of the toughest games of any team in the league. I know, but and a shot of optimism, that is? optimism wouldn't hurt at this juncture. It doesn't have to be so negative. Yeah. <laughs> really. And, by the way, you know why that is? They're playing six tough teams at the end because they played six easy ones at the beginning. That's the way it works. You can't play 16 easy ones. No, yeah. sure can't. Optimism, realism. <laughs> Realistic. <laughs> okay. Realistic. They don't have... A real good offensive line. They have very few good wide receivers. They miss uh, that Cook a lot. He's their best cornerback. They don't have him. So they're playing a young kid, Smith. 
He was real good early in this season. Smith, He's having his Robinson? problems now, too. Smith? Harrison Smith. Harrison Smith. Smith. Oh, Harrison Smith. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought you meant a cornerback. They don't have that great personnel. Yeah, Kevin Williams played well today. Huh? Kevin Williams played well today. Yeah. And so yeah. did Chad Greenway. He's a good linebacker. He had an excellent game. Yeah. yeah. Greenway is a good linebacker. See this cup? It's half full. Right? <laughs> it's half full. Take a break. Of course it is. You'll be half full for two weeks until they really and don't forget the pasta to go with the Buddy Bowl. They've got it going on at J.D. Hoyt's. Yes, they do. Stop on by. Timberwolves game this winter. Perfect place, even the Metrodome. Yeah, it's a, it's a place. It's a must-stop, J.D. Hoyt's. You know, it's a good spot to sign. stop there after a Timberwolves game. They might sign you. Yeah, really. If, play. if, yeah. if, if you're if healthy you right good. now. <laughs> yeah, if you're the way things going body, with them. If you're a warm body, they might uh, sign you. They're down to 10. Ten players. Ten Hang players. I've never seen like an that. official statement on the Timberwolves. i never seen anything like that in my life. I know today that, uh, can't think of the kid's name, but North Carolina was a member of the Wolves last year. He scored 25 points from Ellington. Memphis. Ellington. Ellington. Wayne Ellington, yeah. They beat Memphis beat uh, Miami. Yep. Thanks to him. I thought he was a but, pretty good player. Well, they kept they brought in Brandon Roy instead. That's not going to work yeah. out the way it looked. But Budinger torn meniscus. Did you hear about Did you hear about Chase Budinger, Sid? Pardon me. Did you hear torn about Chase Buz, Budinger torn meniscus? That's a month. Came That's out. Month. Came out earlier today. Month or six weeks. He's got to have surgery. Down to know. ten guys. So, but you know, like the Vikings, I mean, they've surpassed expectations early. Yes, yeah, they have. Yeah. This they have. I mean, they play decent defense. Um, you know, if they could just tread water until some of these guys get healthy, you know, they've got a shot to make a run, run at the postseason. Uh, I like ch watching Chase Budinger play before he broke down with a knee injury. Now, that's a big blow. Berea, J.J. Berea, he was playing well, and he's got a I sore foot. I think, though, you look at J.J. Berea and, you know, how small he is mm -hmm. and what he likes to do, I think he's always going to be injured, Patrick, because this yeah, they, game yeah, doesn't allow for a tough yeah. guy like that. If you're going to be tough, you can't be 5'10". The and other on. night in the locker room after he was limping around a little with the bad foot, uh, Pekovic asked sure, him, all the time. Pekovic asked him what was wrong, and he said sprained midfoot. And Pekovic says, "Oh, six weeks." <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty. He's good. been hurt more than. If any there was a guy. time for, if it was the time for Derek same Williams guys to step are up, hurt all the time. This is the time now. You're right. You know, this is this is really to me. This first month is about him. It is. Derek Williams is a high pick, number two, right overall. Yeah. Okay. Played great on uh, played great on uh, Friday and went 0 for 10 yesterday. Right, missed his first 10 shots yesterday. They're in Chicago. He, yeah. They're injured. He's in the lineup. He's getting minutes. It's his time Saturday. to shine. He's yeah, gonna, I mean, he's got his body in shape. He's done all the things exactly. he's supposed to do. It's time to play. Yeah, he's got to start producing. Put Sydney, what do you think? The two guys are supposed to make him much better than last year. Roy and the Russian. Russian didn't play in an NBA last year. Yeah, he I mean, played. He's a, hell of a player. He's huh? a good possible. I, I don't. I don't think though that they he think Roy is going to make him a lot better. I think they thought he'd just give him something. Played in Russia. Kurlenko. So you don't know what he's going to do when he starts going against the good, the good teams. Roy, it's got to be a big gamble. I mean, uh, what, what do they think? I don't see any other clubs breaking Roy's door down. You know, well, I don't uh, think nine years after. Uh, we took Andy Eby instead of Josh <laughs> Howard. He's floating around, six foot six guy. He's uh, nobody signed him. Maybe they can bring him in Andy here. Andy Eby. Um, Andy or Josh? Nah, Josh Howard. <laughs> no, I, I think Andy's uh, working in a Turkish restaurant. Or He's something. somewhere, yeah. Know. Well, I think you knew that Brandon was going to need some time here and there because of the knee. I, I don't think anybody anticipated this early in the season. That's the problem here. Because right. now you're, going, you're worried about the next several months here with him. And how much can you use him? And how much can you play him? Does he need to sit down entire day games? Can he play 10 minutes a game, 15? <laughs> to, to your who point. Gonna, who are they going to beat out in, in their division? Tell me who they're going to beat out. Who are they better in their division? Well, right now with half their team, nobody. Nobody right now with everybody injured. What, with Ruby when they get love. healthy. When Ruby on love, they're pretty good. Yeah, they are. What did you think of the Lakers firing their coach? They had no choice. Think he lost that team? Listen, when you're making the kind of money they're making, they will give, according to Glenn Taylor, he told us that, $50 million in revenue sharing next year. When they're taking in that kind of money, and they're charging the kind of prices they are. They better win, or they're going to quit drawing. Do you hear Phil Jackson? He doesn't want to make all the road trips. So what are you going to do about that? Gonna, how can a guy not make all the road trips and be your coach? That's like Brendan Royce saying we're going to kind of play him, but yeah, not play right. him. And what he about will. what about Flip? Think Flip will get that? 
Flip just signed a five-year contract with uh, Well, I'm sure there's an out, out clause in that that says he can go no, close to Lakers. Get out of that. They're not going after Flip. Oh, you don't no. think so? No, they want to move the ball. No. They, they want to go up and Veteran down. coach, Two you things know. about they the Lakers. get Phil Jackson some way. Don't worry. Two things about the Lakers. One, They'll it doesn't matter what offense they're running. You're going to dominate the whole show? <laughs> what are you talking about? You've been, you've been, I've been, I've, you've talking. been shutting me down. You've been shutting me down, Sid. Why not? Well. You haven't so, got a chance well, to talk. At least, at least give us one thing about the Lakers. One thing about the Lakers. It doesn't matter what offense they're running. They can run the Princeton offense. They can run the triple post. They're a bad defensive team. They are not a good defensive team. They're going to be giving up points uh, all season long. And they're... That's the issue with them. They've got to figure out a way to play some D. They will get Phil Jackson. Do you think they out. know they have Phil Jackson when they made that move? Pardon me? Do you think they know they've got him, Phil Jackson? I don't think they knew they had him, but I knew they th they knew the 15 million or something like that or 12 <laughs> million or something like that will do it, and that's what they'll do. He's a Whatever it takes to give him, they'll give him. He's a life. So what are you going to do in road games? Have like an iPad sitting in the, in the chair <laughs> with him Skyping or something going... <laughs> Kobe Triangle. He, <laughs> what wants, you want? he wants the Ben Scully <laughs> the When you take in the kind of money they take in, and you make the kind of money they make, you can afford to pay, and you better win in that market if you're going to draw people. I I couldn't believe this. Glenn Carrier bought a, a end zone ticket, two end zone tickets for the Patriots in the end zone. The price. Two fifty. Holy cow! Really? You mean at, at at New England? Huh? In New England? Yeah. Wow. Take a break. Come back. Imagine. Sports show. Stay with us. Yeah. There it is. Stop on by and test drive the Q7, the Q5. Those are tight vehicles. Bruce Boney will greet you at the door. Have a cup of coffee and talk some sports. Carousel Audi. We also saw an ad for Soundpoint. Uh, Starkey Hearing is what uh, what you use. You subscribe to and you use it when you're watching TV. Well, they help me. They have some pretty good. Uh Items that help you with sound on TV, with uh, hearing, and uh, they do a good job. The, well, we better be careful here because we got the University of Illinois here and <laughs> University of Minnesota's favorite son here. Yeah, they're on top I'll right tell now. Tell you what, <laughs> there's something wrong with whoever runs that athletic department because when you are a coach at the University of Illinois. You're in such a great position. You got St. Louis right adjacent to your city where there's some great sports played. Uh, it's more like you, 200 miles, Sid, but Would you ahead. let me, you do doing all the <laughs> talking. <laughs> let me do all the talk. You just made St. Louis a suburb of Champaign. <laughs> go ahead, but go ahead, go ahead. You, you never stop. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead, what's your point? Chicago, you got great places to recruit. Okay. They play as good a basketball in the Chicago area Duke recruits all the time out of but, Chicago. But what about football? We're talking about the football game yesterday. Football, you look at Notre Dame's roster and see how many guys are in the Notre Dame roster from Chicago. Look at uh, Ohio State even. You, there is no reason why the University of Illinois shouldn't win. You, you're right. At least they should be better than what they are because that thing yesterday, there was just nothing there. I agree. You know, Zook left some good players there, but Tim Beckman's going through some problems there in his first year. I agree, Sid. There's, but, you know, Illinois football hasn't had that great of a, a tradition recently. When they were linebacker U, when they had Simeon Rice and Dana Howard and those guys, they had a pretty decent program. But um, they fall by the wayside. And... Um, you look at the roster. I remember um, John Makovic was the coach of Illinois, uh, but it's not a destination program. He left to go to Texas. We brought in Mike White, and he went to the Rose Bowl in '83. But he, 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 and there he, was he, 58 he, investigators yeah. from the NCAA and, living there and brought, full time, and, and brought in 25 JUCO players, there. and they were able to go to the Rose Mike Bowl. Mike Brewster was one of them. Yeah, Mike that's White right. Brewster was one the of book. them. Mike White was the biggest cheater that ever lived. But in the days of Doug Mills, Bert Ingerson. Mm -hmm. And Ray Elliott and people like that, they won. And guess what? And there's no reason why well, they, they shouldn't win they've now. They've gone to about three Rose Bowls since our boys yeah. did. They had the well, juice there for a year. Rose juice Williams went and beat Ohio State. Beckman's talking about going to Juco route next year. So get ready for okay. another influx so, of kids. What about the Gophers? Gophers, uh, I'm happy about it. They won six games. Mm -hmm. They'll go to a bowl game. They'll give them a chance to develop some players. I didn't think they played very well against Illinois uh, offensively. They should have killed Defensively, Illinois. they should be able to stop, and they're terrible. So, uh, but now, this gives these kids some, re some interest in practicing the next two weeks the because they got another game. I think the Gophers next year 
will win seven or eight games. Okay. Well, they uh, it'll be hard to believe the league can be as bad as it was this year, but maybe it will be. But uh, Iowa is not going to a bowl game now. They got beat. Right. Indiana's not Purdue going to Purdue can go right? if they win the next two games. Purdue would have to win too, they but they'd Illinois have to upset week. somebody. Right? They, no. play, they play Illinois next week, and then they play, I can't remember who they But play there's against. only going to be, and no Ohio State, no Penn State, there's only going to be about six el- six or seven eligible. Right? They won't have enough teams. Yeah. Big Ten, will, tomorrow the Big Ten's got a meeting in Chicago. In the athletic the, directors. All, all the Bulls are coming, athletic directors, to tell them what they got. They got a chance to get a decent. They're going to go to Houston, supposedly. <laughs> Probably. Meineke Car Care Bowl. Can something. the Gophers win one more game this year and go to Arizona? Well, they could be there at Michigan State, depending on what Michigan State yeah, team possible. shows up. Yeah. Michigan we, State might have to win to go to a bowl game. And then, you know, yeah, the way Michigan They're State's been up five. in five. And they got. You, you, they go to Nebraska this week. You've been to that stadium, right, Ben? Oh, yeah. What is it? Biggest How's it compared city. to the other big Second tent? biggest city in Nebraska. <laughs> on game <The> day? Stadium. <laughs> yeah, second biggest city. It's pretty good. I was there uh, for some thrillers for the Gophers. Uh, Impressive. I'll gotta... never forget the one where they knelt down when it was 42 to nothing with a minute to go in the first half. <laughs> they got the best... yard line and they knelt they down. The best quarterback in the country, I think. <laughs> Take a break. I'm going for that. How about that? There it is. Taste the NFL. Check it out. Sample food and wine from Twin Cities Finest Restaurants. We're rubbing shoulders with your favorite 2012 Vikings players and coaches. For tickets and more information, go to vikings.com slash taste the NFL. Talk to Wayne today. It sounds like they've got a great event in the store coming up in uh, in a week and a day. We were just talking. Uh, well, first, since Lavelle, you cover the baseball. They, they had these meetings. I didn't hear anything that came out of it. Yeah, a lot of times the general managers' meetings are kind of that's kind the, of the warm up. Yeah, they it? kind of lay the groundwork for trades later on. And you know, there was a report, you know, about a week and a half ago that the Twins called the Rays about uh, James Shields, who would be the perfect pitcher for that rotation because he's a two hundred and twenty inning guy. You think they'll trade the left fielder? Um, I think they would consider it, but you know, if they spent so much time looking for a, le- a right-handed hitting power hitter, it would be surprising to me to see them trade one. I don't one. think they can get value. I don't think they can get value for him. They'll trade Span before they trade him. I can see Span being traded. Span has more value? Yeah. Well, younger, younger. Younger plays center field, good leadoff hitter, and he's got a friendly Tampa contract. native. Yes. Yes, and see, the Rays are losing B.J. Upton. So I can see where the match is, you know, for a Span to, to the Rays. The Phillies, Phillies, yeah. Yeah. Phillies looking for a center fielder and a leadoff hitter, and they got about five or six great pitching prospects. Braves in that same Who's category. Nationals in Phillies. that same category. Phillies? And the Braves. Yep. But the Phillies, have, they're looking what for a leadoff What about uh, Morno? You think they might trade Morno? Who would take Morno? Well, the, the thing is that, you know, um, when I was doing some snooping around during the trade deadline, uh, a scout friend of mine, you know, was, was, I was asking about the Dodgers, and the Dodgers GM was leery of trading for Morneau because of his concussion and health history. And so Morneau ends up missing the last week and a half of this past season because his wrist flared up on him. So I think teams would view Morneau as a little bit of a risk here just because he's, he's dealing the, with concussions and dealing other with other injuries, and he's making $14 million. The other thing said is if they trade him, they'd have to pay four, five, six yeah. million of it, and Terry Ryan don't like doing that. Right. So. Bernatsky thinks Parmley can play. He says if he gets his chance right from the start, he thinks he can play. He I think Parmley can be. Of all that. those guys, he likes him the best. Would you play him at first base? I think he's more suited for first base. I think you put him in out in, in right field. He's got maybe a little bit. I just don't know if you get enough home runs out of that position, though, with Parmley. I think he's suited for bat. No, he'll hit some. Home yeah, he runs. Think, but, home Fifteen, home. maybe. I don't think he'll get to twenty. I think get to twenty. Well, I think so. That may be as many as Morneau hits today. Well, you know, yeah, it could be, yeah. You know, like you now. say, if you were a club and Morneau's had all these troubles, he's got one year in his contract at $13 million. Why would they, like You're you right. said, yeah. Ryan ain't going to do that. The other thing, it, the, the best story of the Twins is the soap opera they got going on inside that whole organization. Well, people Holy leaving, cow. I know, it's a revolving door now, you know. We'll be back again next week. Sydney, final thoughts?